Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, wherever you are watching from. Uh, thank you so much for joining our Wednesday webinar series. My name is Vanessa, and I am the International Recruitment Manager here at London International Academy. So myself, along with my team, will be hosting a free webinar every Wednesday for you to register for and receive information each week on different topics. You'll hear from guest speakers, including our own LIA alumni. We will also be sharing some news and updates from around the school, including our new uh, Leah Care Plus program starting in September 2021. And we are offering um, right now a free week of audit classes right from your home country. So you can actually take classes online to see what it's like to be in a Canadian high school and what uh, the classes are like. So that's an option for you right now. Um, we are also offering uh, laptop scholarships for full-time um, long-term students who are uh, attending uh, starting in September, just for example. So for those of you joining us today, you may be a student looking for information. Um, you might be a parent. You may have already been registered uh, with us uh, for September, or you may be one of our international partners. Um, so we hope that everyone will be able to take away something from this information session today. So thank you for joining us today. Um, next week, we will be hosting our webinar to speak about the IB Diploma Program with our IB Program Coordinator. But in today's webinar, we will be going over the Ontario Secondary School Diploma and uh, speaking about university pathways with our guidance counselor, uh, Mr. McDowell, who is with us. Um, now, Mr. McDowell has been in education for five years. He was a teacher overseas in the UK, um, and he was born and raised in London, Ontario, um, and went to Western University for his undergraduate and teacher's college. So um, today we hope to take around 30 minutes to go through our slides, and then we will have time for questions at the end. So if you do have questions, please put them in the Q&A chat box and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. So today's webinar will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel uh, later if you need to rewatch anything. So uh, just to get started, I'm going to show you a quick video about London, Ontario. London because it's a beautiful city and also because it's famous name London, but in Canada. I chose London, Canada because I fell in love with the country and its people and I wanted to practice my French. It's a nice small community and such a great place for me to learn English. I love the culture here. I love the people. There's so many cultures here. There's so many different backgrounds. It sort of feels like in London you really know everybody because people are very nice to you. I chose London, Canada because it would be a great place for me to study to get into university. I chose London, Canada because of the Western University so that I can apply my research skills into the industry. I chose London, Canada because it's a great city and this is where I found my professional career. I chose London, Canada because there's a community here that welcomes me. London, Canada is actually a place which accepts everybody. They are so receptive even though you come from a foreign country and they just mingle with you. The city is like, it's amazing. It's safe, quiet and simply I fall in love with it. I love London, it's my second home. I never ever had the feeling that I'm homesick. Never feel like lonely. Everything here just provides me the feelings of being at home. And I think this is a great, great thing to say about the city that you consider this your home. My most favorite thing about uh, to do in London, Canada would be playing in the snow. I go crazy when I see snow. One of my favorite places in London, Canada is the Covent Garden Market. I like going there, I like shopping there. There's so many ethnic restaurants that you can go and eat at. I like the 
atmosphere there, I like people there, I like everything. My favorite thing to do in London, Canada is playing golf in the summertime. It's just awesome. My favorite thing to do in London, Canada is actually going to the park. The Victoria Park, I think it's really beautiful. Especially how beautiful it is in the summertime. With the blue sky and the clean air, everything was just quiet and in a fairy tale. It's just, it's beautiful. I love it, it's amazing. As you know, uh, or may not know, we are a Canadian private secondary day in boarding school um, in an authorized IB World School. Lots to go through here today. So again, if you have any questions, please just fill out uh, the Q&A um, as we go through the slides and we will uh, be sure to answer them at the end. Uh, so our rankings, we are actually the only private school in London, Ontario to offer the IB Diploma Program. Um, we are the only private school in the province of Ontario to offer the DP uh, Spanish. So um, that's the um, International Baccalaureate Diploma Program Spanish course. Um, and we're the only private school in the province that actually offers uh, that course. So if you want to take um, beginner Spanish, um, that uh, would be a good choice for you. Uh, we're one of only 16 private schools in Ontario to offer the IB Diploma Program. Um, overall, Leah ranked in the top three schools out of 500 schools. Um, so that was almost 10,000 participants in the uh, Canadian Mathematics Competition. Internationally successful STEM program. Um, we have a STEM lab that is actually sponsored by the Bank of Montreal. Um, we are as an all ESL school, mainly ESL, um, which means English as a second language. We have the same first time writers pass rate for the literacy test as the all English native speaking local schools. And if you don't know what the literacy test is, we will explain what that is um, a bit later in the presentation. So in general, you know, when you're thinking about why Canada, why should I come to Canada? Um, here's some interesting things about uh, why international students are choosing Canada. So the top three reasons international students choose Canada is the quality of the Canadian education system. Um, we have a very strong history of um, our education system is ranked uh, top in the world. Um, and a lot of our students are very successful in not only getting into universities in Canada, but it's also world, uh, is recognized worldwide um, as well. So a lot of our students go to other um, universities um, worldwide in different countries as well. Canada's reputation as a tolerant and non-discriminatory society um, and Canada's reputation as a safe country. Um, those are the three main reasons why students are choosing Canada. Uh, we are the 10th largest economy in the world. Uh, we're the fourth in economic growth. Um, so we are, uh, we may be 10 now, but um, in a few years from now, we uh, could be, um, you know, top five. Our growth is um, growing extremely high. And that could be also due to the fact that we are um, welcoming so many international uh, people every year to the country. Um, <clears throat> we have a population of about 38 million people um, and Canada is committed to increasing immigration. Um, that's 1.2 million newcomers between 2021 and 2023. So in terms of education, um, there's just some quick information about uh, international students. So there was 642,000 uh, new international students um, that as of December 2019 were studying in Canada. Over the past five years, international student numbers in Canadian institutions and schools have grown by 82%, um, which is very high. First place in the world on the amount of people having a high education. Um, in Canada, so that's um, something there. And uh, these are the top four um, internationally recognized schools. So these are the top four schools in Canada. Um, and you can see their country ranking and their world ranking um, there as well. So that would be University of Toronto, University of British Columbia, McGill University and McMaster University. And many of our students um, attend these schools uh, and get offers to them every year. 
So I showed you the video uh, about London. Now, where is London? So uh, as you can see, this is a map of Canada um, and the USA. So uh, Canada is divided by province. Um, so we are in the province of Ontario. And then if you can see down here below, we are in London, which is two hours from Toronto, which I'm sure uh, you know, and we are two hours from Niagara Falls. And uh, we are right in between two um, lakes. And so if you ever miss um, a beach setting, uh, you can go to one of the lakes um, and there's some uh, really nice beaches there. Lenny, Ontario, uh, it is actually called Forest City. Um, if you ever look at a aerial footage of this city, um, the whole city is just covered. It looks like a huge forest. There's so many trees. Um, as you can see here, this is downtown. This is a photo and uh, Victoria Park is right there in the middle. Um, so it's uh, lots of trees everywhere. It's very beautiful. Um, so slow pace, welcoming atmosphere. Um, some of the best uh, medical and educational resources in the province. Um, it's a great city for high school students and newcomers to Canada. So life in London, this is a more zoomed in view of downtown and uh, the center of the city where we are. We are in a very central location. Um, you can see here uh, is London International Academy. We are right beside Covenant Garden Market that you saw in the video. Um, and a lot of other great resources like the park or the library uh, for studying, our Ivy Hall residence where um, uh, our boarding facilities are. So um, the population of the city is about 545,000 people and it's home to over 10,000 international students each year. Um, because of uh, Fanshawe College, Western University are two post uh, secondary institutions that are very well known here in the city. So uh, our campus uh, is, um, as you can see here, just some of the classes, the art room, chemistry, physics. Um, we have, uh, in terms of security, every student actually has a key fob to get into uh, the building. Um, and only students and staff can get into uh, both buildings, both the residence and um, our school campus with the classrooms. We are in a very central location. And so we have urban facilities. So this means that we have uh, a lot of our facilities are actually within the city. So just like um, if you know the University of Toronto, University of Toronto is kind of scattered throughout the city and they have different facilities um, that they use for with their students. Um, so we kind of operate the same way um, where we don't have uh, necessarily a uh, soccer field in the in behind the school but uh, two minutes down the road uh, take a walk and there is a field there um, the public library is very close by um, as well for students to study uh, there's a gym uh, if you get a gym membership there is a, a gym with a basketball court swimming um, different lessons you can take and a uh, whole uh, gym with machines as well. So we were founded in uh, 2002. Um, some of our accreditations, um, we are an IB World School, as I mentioned, and we will talk a bit more about uh, what IB is. We are an authorized Ontario Ministry of Education inspected private high school, um, which means we are um, we'll talk about this a bit later. We are inspected every year by uh, the Ministry of Education to offer the Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Uh, we are a Cambridge Assessment Admissions Testing Center, um, Advanced Placement Testing Center, an SAT Test uh, Center, and an IELTS Test Center. Um, so if you want to take any of those tests, you don't have to leave the school. Um, and uh, just some information, um, obviously we're just grade nine to 12. So that's typically ages 13 to 18. Um, 18 would be the absolute maximum that you could uh, join the school. And our population is about 250 on average a uh, year. So if you're wondering where some of our students have come from, um, there is a long list um, over the years, um, but you can see this map kind of shows uh, where our students have come from. You can see Mexico, Colombia, uh, Nigeria, Uganda, Kenya, Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, Vietnam, uh, China, Iran, India, Brazil, 
uh, South Africa, um, all over. And uh, yeah, we hope to fill that map even more. Um, but you can see that our um, we do have quite a diverse um, student population. And not only that, but our teachers as well. Um, we have a lot of Canadian teachers, um, but also we have quite a few that are from other countries. And so when you come to the school, you will see a lot of diverse faces and uh, a lot of people who have maybe similar uh, backgrounds or come from the same country as you do. Um, so it's a very uh, welcoming place and it uh, describes Canada very well because Canada is very much like that. So this is just an idea. Um, when you're looking at private and public schools in Canada, there's uh, quite a few differences between the two, depending on where you are coming from. Um, some public schools mean different things in different countries. So this chart is just to explain what the difference is here in Canada. So in a public school, uh, you'll find that any student can register from the regional area. So that means any student, there's no application process. They really just sign up, register, um, and they uh, go to the class. So there's uh, really no process for who um, gets to attend the school. It's public uh, government funded schools are not inspected. So they're not held to as high of a standard. Um, I would say, so in terms of a private school, annually inspected, um, we are, we have someone come in every single year and check um, out the educational standards that we are offering our students. So that means that we are um, inspected in the classroom, our teachers, the building, everything is inspected. Um, whereas in public schools, they uh, don't have that kind of uh, inspection. Um, therefore, you know, not held to as high of a standard. Uh, just going back to uh, public school, obviously, um, you know, any student can register, whereas, you know, for private schools, uh, they are pre-screened group of student applicants who are very academically focused. So, you know, if you want to be around students that are very like-minded and they want to get into the best university possible, um, they have all come from different parts of the world, as I explained, and um, that means that they're here to uh, study and they're here to um, also, you know, have a good time and make friends um, as well, but they are very much more focused on uh, their goals of going to university. Um, and so uh, that's the difference that you'll see between the two types of uh, schools. Um, in public, they are larger classes. So you might have a class of 30 plus students. Um, so you might be in a class, uh, you might be one of 30 students, you might not get as much attention. Um, as you would in a smaller classroom setting. Um, in public schools, they only offer homestay options, um, so there is no boarding. Um, whereas at a private school, um, you were gonna find smaller class sizes, uh, more like five um, to 15 students uh, per class. So the teacher-student ratio provides a student more individual attention. Um, we also offer other services, including ESL support, university preparation support, personalized guidance meetings, private tutoring, uh, boarding facility, uh, spring and summer classes, airport pickup, specializing in international student needs. And the other big difference is we actually have an eight month academic year um, to provide more flexibility to our students. So um, we'll talk about the intake schedules a bit later, but um, eight month, uh, compared to a 10-month academic year. Uh, we host classes all year round, so that means that uh, although your academic year is eight months, um, you could, uh, you know, uh, extend it to the spring and summer, and uh, that would provide you more credits, more time to um, study throughout the spring and summer to get ahead or uh, catch up on a few classes. So the school intake, uh, we have four different intakes throughout the year. So like I said, September till April is our main academic year, but you'll find uh, that we have a May and July semester. So May and June would typically be for students who are maybe starting in January or extending from their September. So they would go September till June or January to June. Our July and August semester is typically for those that want to get ahead before they start in September. 
or they just want to come for two months um, and study in our uh, summer semester, uh, which means that they'll be in classes, um, and but only taking two classes instead of four. So each semester of our academic year, they'd be taking four classes, September to December, four, January to April, four. And then May and June, July and August, two um, each semester. Now I'm going to now hand it over to uh, Mr. McDowell, um, who is going to speak about the Ontario Secondary School uh, Diploma. All right, hello everyone, my name is Tyler. Um, as Ms. Vanessa said, I've been at the school for uh, four years. Uh, this is my fourth uh, kind of admission cycle. So I've had quite a bit of experience with international students, um, what, uh, what is required by the universities, extra hoops that they have to jump through like IELTS or TOEFL. Um, so I'm happy to uh, share my experience with you uh, and happy to stay on for some questions at the end. Uh, so the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, um, we've got three requirements for it, okay? So, um, so any student between the grades uh, 9 and 12 can enter, and in order to get the diploma at the end of their four years, they have to tick these three boxes. The first one is completing the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test. So this is a test that every student in Ontario has to take, and it is usually taken in grade 10. For our students, because some of them are coming for um, maybe one year or two years, uh, they're coming after grade 10. So they would take that just before they graduate with us. Uh, so it is written every March, usually, uh, and it is a pass-fail test. Uh, basically, it's just to test their literacy and their reading comprehension, their writing. Um, and uh, we also run a preparation course for this test. Uh, just to make sure that our students uh, are well prepared for it. Um, worst case scenario, the student does not pass the test. Uh, there is a course that they can take with us after that. So it's a it's called Ontario Literacy Course, um, and they just continue to work on the skills that the test uh, was kind of evaluating. Um, so it's not the end of the world if a student doesn't pass it. We can still uh, make sure that they get their diploma on time. Uh, that being said, for this year, uh, because of COVID, the test has been uh, canceled. It, it is not a, a requirement for students graduating this year. Uh, as we move forward, hopefully things improve with COVID in the province, uh, and, and we resume that next year, uh, but we will make sure that everybody is well informed about that, uh, and any changes made by the government will be communicated. Uh, the second thing, uh, community service hours. In Ontario, we think it's really important that students um, are kind of exposed to different opportunities in their community, that they give back, uh, that they learn from those experiences. Um, and so we at LIA, obviously, we encourage that as well. Um, again, because of COVID, uh, it makes it a little bit more difficult to serve in the community. Uh, so those hours have been cut back. So now for any students coming to LIA, if they're here for just one year, they would require five hours uh, for two years, 10 hours. So it's been cut in half. Um, there are also online learning opportunities or serving opportunities uh, as well as uh, peer tutoring. Um, so we can come up with some creative ways to get those hours still. Uh, and then the last uh, requirement is 30 credits. Uh, so in order to get the diploma, uh, a student must obtain 30 credits. Most classes, uh, equal one credit. There's a couple half credit courses. Uh, but we, won't, we don't really need to get into that right now. Um, for our purposes, one class equals one credit. And students will be given credits based on previous learning in, in their home country. So uh, I'll get into that chart in a moment. Um, but uh, but that's, uh, that's the case. So for community service, again, in a normal year, when we're not having COVID restrictions, Here's some examples of things that our students have done. Uh, so on the right hand, you can see mural painting. So this is a big project that we um, partnered with the city for. Uh, we received public funds for it and we had local artists join our students uh, and they contributed their talents to these uh, beautiful murals that are now hanging uh, in one of the, uh, under the underpass in kind of the bridge area between the residence and the school. So. 
uh, you can see their contributions there. Uh, we have My Sister's Place, which is a woman's shelter. We can see a few of our students uh, volunteering there. We also have the Walk So Kids Can Talk. This is generally hosted in a park that's very close to LIA, uh, which makes it very convenient for our students. Um, in the video that we showed you at the very beginning, uh, you saw Sunfest, which is this big international festival with lots of international music and food, um, different vendors with uh, clothing and, and crafts. Uh, so Victoria Park hosts, um, I'd say every other weekend, a really nice festival in the summer. And there's always really good uh, volunteering opportunities there. So hopefully post COVID, we'll get back to that and we'll have lots of opportunities. Um, and then there's also some other community partners, Goodwill, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, Salvation Army, again, being located downtown, we have lots of organizations very close that we can partner with. Options for credit transfers. I briefly mentioned this on the first slide. So students need to get 30 credits to get their diploma, but we will uh, reward credits for uh, previous studies uh, in their home country. So if a student comes to us after completing grade nine, then they will be given eight credits towards that 30. Grade 10, they'll receive 16. Grade 11, they'll receive somewhere between 22 and 24, generally 22. Uh, and if they've completed grade 12, they will receive 24 credits. As you can see in this kind of a, this matrix, um, we've got the English level on the left-hand side, and on the top, we have the math level. So every student who comes from an out of province education system, even if it's a Canadian system, let's say in Quebec or in British Columbia, they have to write a placement test. They have to write two placement tests, one for English, one for math. So if a student places into grade 12 English and grade 12 math, uh, and they've finished uh, high school in their previous uh, country or province, uh, then they will only need six credits with us to get to 30. Um, another important consideration is when applying to universities, you have to have six grade 12 courses at the university or uh, what we call the mixed uh, level. Uh, so if they place in a grade 12 math, grade 12 English, then they can finish uh, in six credits, uh, which is important in terms of the timeline. So if a student comes after Christmas, they could still graduate by June. Um, Vanessa mentioned the, the flexibility of our school because of those four different semesters. Um, and I couldn't agree with it more, especially if a student maybe places a little bit lower in English or math, they're able to catch up more quickly with those courses uh, and prerequisites and, and graduate uh, Kind of more on their timeline than they would if there was a little bit more uh, rigidity about a two semester year. Uh, so that's a little bit about the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, uh, which we have most of our students are currently enrolled in, um, but we are currently in our second year of our IB program. We're very excited about it. Um, the first IB school was established in Canada in 1974, uh, and currently there are 175 IB diploma schools in Canada, uh, the majority of them here in Ontario. Uh, we are one of 12 private schools in Ontario that offer this diploma. Uh, the diploma pass rate in Canada is quite high compared to the world average, 91% uh, compared to 79. Uh, Canada also has the highest per capita participation in the IB diploma in the world. Uh, so it is a growing uh, diploma in terms of its popularity. Um, so what, what is it about IB? It is a two-year program uh, for students that are in grade 11 and 12. Uh, so students would be fine to complete grade 9 and 10 in either our Ontario diploma program or in uh, grade 9 and 10 in your home country. Uh, and then they would transfer in for grade 11 and 12 of IB. Uh, it is a very internationally recognized diploma uh, that is held in a high regard. It's a very rigorous program and um, because of the standardized testing, uh, the mark uh, moderation, it is very trusted mark as well. Uh, 
so students will be taking six subjects over their two years, uh, plus what we call the core, uh, which is made up of three different aspects, the theory of knowledge, CAS, and the extended essay, uh, which I will get into in this next slide. So as you can see, we've got this three core subjects. One is the extended essay. So each student over their two years in the diploma program will be researching uh, a topic that interests them. Uh, they'll have a extended essay supervisor that will meet with them regularly uh, and give them feedback on their thesis, on their draft work, um, and, and just kind of make sure that they're challenging them and that they, they're on the right track. Um, so this is something that they can kind of focus in an area that maybe they want to focus on in university, or maybe it's just a topic that they're interested in. So that would be one aspect of the, the diploma program. The second one, theory of knowledge. This is a course that encourages critical thinking, student inquiry, um, and deepening understanding. Sometimes we call it uh, kind of, how do you know what you know, right? It's all, there's a little bit of philosophy in it, um, but it is going into um, kind of critical thinking, which is uh, something that we need to encourage in our students, especially as they head off to university. And lastly, creativity, activity, and service. Uh, this is kind of more getting involved in the community, uh, using their skills and interests um, to, to benefit others around them. So those are three things that are mandatory. Uh, those are kind of uh, what we call they make up the core. And then their main six subjects uh, are listed here. At LIA, uh, they take two language classes. Uh, so English and Spanish is what most of our students take, although some students also take Mandarin and English. Individuals in society, uh, students take business management or IT in a global society. And we have uh, the sciences offered here, chemistry, physics, computer science. We also have offered biology. Uh, so we kind of tailor what courses we offer uh, once we interview each student in that cohort to make sure that we can match them with the best courses. Uh, then we have a mathematics course. And then our last option is the arts. Uh, however, if a student is not as interested in the arts, they could take a second science here, uh, especially if they have interest in engineering or in medicine. That's what most students will do. So when comparing the Ontario Secondary School Diploma and the IB Diploma, there are some differences. They are both fantastic uh, programs. Uh, they are both well recognized around the world uh, and they can uh, open up many different pathways for students. But I'll get into some of the differences here. With the Ontario Secondary School Diploma, one of the big things is flexibility. So not just flexibility in terms of timelines. I've already got into the, the uh, advantage of our four semesters. Uh, they offer a lot of flexibility in terms of maybe joining the school late or trying to catch up. Uh, also for retaking courses, maybe there's a class that a student didn't do as well in the first time and they want to retake it, that flexibility is there. Um, and you can join in at any grade level. Uh, so that's one advantage. Whereas in IB, it's a two-year program. So again, you'd finish grade nine and 10 in a different curriculum and then switch into IB DP for grade 11 and 12. Each year is 10 months from September to June and then they would have July and August off. Uh, for Ontario, uh, any level of academic abilities, as I said, each student writes an English placement test and a math placement test. So we can really cater to what their needs are. So even if they come in and they test, let's say ESL CEO, so our third level of ESL, um, then we can still work with that. We can give them courses that are appropriate for that level. Um, and, and same for math. For IB, a little bit less so. It, it is a little bit more geared towards academically strong students who want to be challenged with the most rigorous curriculum um, with a focus on uh, education and international open-mindedness. Uh, also a little bit more of a focus on well-roundedness. As I showed you on the last slide, uh, there were six different subjects. So you really got to focus on um, kind of being well-rounded, being strong in science and math and humanities uh, and language acquisition. So it's a really good curriculum. 
um, but it does uh, it does require students to be uh, well rounded. In the Ontario program, you have lots of choices in terms of what courses you want to take. But let's say you're really strong in math. Three of your six grade 12 courses could be math courses. Um, so it's a little bit less, um, it, it's more flexible in, in, in that way. Um, great option for educational pathways into Canadian universities. Um, so again, most of the students will be com competing with other Ontario students to get into Ontario uh, universities. Obviously, there are many international students as well, but that's primarily who they'll be competing with. Um, but we've also had students get into schools in the UK, in the US, and Australia with the OSSB. Um, for the IB program, because it is so well recognized and so well regarded as a rigorous program, um, international institutions are more familiar with it, uh, especially in the United States. Uh, some of our early returns on our current uh, cohort that's graduating, uh, they've received strong offers uh, to the United States. Um, and then the last one is any English level uh, for OSSD because of the placement tests. Uh, for IB, uh, we do require a minimum six in IELTS just because of how rigorous the program is. Uh, if students are coming in with an English level lower than that, uh, they will uh, struggle uh, quite mightily. Um, if you are interested in science, technology, engineering, mathematics pathway, um, this is definitely a great option for you uh, to put on your resume and application uh, when you're applying to certain programs. Um, this is typically a small group of about 10 to 20 student peers. And uh, the real motto and vision of this program is that they're moving beyond just textbook learning um, and more hands-on skills. Um, and the director of this program really sees every student's uh, learning strength um, and challenges it to grow um, because we do recognize that every student learns differently. And so whether um, you, know, you are new to computer programming or um, whatever that may be, you'll be able to learn um, even just like the basics foundations. You can start not having any experience at all through this program. So you'll be learning computer programming to solve any academic math and science problem. Um, you'll be using CAD to create new devices, um, inventions, and 3D printouts. So you'll see in one of the photos here, we have a photo of the students using the 3D printer. Um, and uh, also the robot that they created. Um, so what they'll be able to do is compete in math and science competitions, uh, compete in robotics competitions, and uh, provincial business competitions as well. So um, that's a really interesting program. And if you are interested in any of those, um, please uh, speak to our admissions team about uh, getting involved in that club or um, some classes. So um, as I mentioned, we do have boarding facilities. So um, our accommodations are uh, just a five minute walk from the school. Uh, there is a dining hall, there is a study room, entertainment hall, 24 hour security. Um, there's a residence advisor always on uh, staff uh, in the building. There is uh, internet, uh, coin laundry, and there's facility um, faculty cleaning uh, services as well. Just some photos of uh, the residents there. Now, this is a new program um, that we have just started up uh, very recently. Um, so this will be starting September, 2021. So the London International Canada, or London International Academy's Care Plus program offers all students living in Leah's boarding facilities to receive special attention academically and personally. This program is, uh, may, will be mandatory for uh, grade nine, grade 10, and grade 11 students, and will be optional for grade 12 students. So the Leah Care Plus program um, essentially provides a structured evening and weekend plan that includes supervised activities after classes. Um, we, they provide age and grade appropriate academic guidance and have extra uh, supervision as they transition to more independent living in their senior high school years. Um, they'll be guided by leadership that encourages students to develop healthy routines that balance life inside and outside of the classroom. And they'll be in an environment to learn practical everyday skills as the student moves towards university life. 
So to get more specific, um, as there will be extra academic attention and support, um, I won't go through all these points, but um, in summary, in terms of academic attention, there will be a one-on-one -on -one pre scheduled meeting uh, with our guidance counselor twice a month to discuss academic concerns and questions that arise and those will be pre scheduled. Um, and this is an opportunity to keep you on track um, and make sure that you aren't falling behind in any of your subjects. Um, so those are really important meetings. Uh, there'll be nightly study hall um, and uh, just supporting completing their community service hours as Mr. McDowell was mentioning that is mandatory as part of the OSSD program. Security and supervision um, plus a health plan, you know, due to, um, you know, COVID, we definitely had to, uh, all schools have had to reevaluate how we are providing um, our health plan um, to students. And so um, this also includes nightly check-ins, um, extra security measures in place, especially if the student is under age 16. Um, there, uh, you know, if medical attention is needed, a student will be escorted by a designated staff member. Uh, mental health services are provided to students to utilize if needed. Um, and there's also an after school program. So uh, this is, they must join at least three school clubs and that can include the STEM and DECA um, competitions. So that is mandatory that they at least um, join three clubs. There is a monthly trip that is compulsory and then Friday night programming, which that is compulsory as well. Weekend activities, including photos um, that are gonna be sent to parents to keep uh, in touch. So that is that program. Um, <clears throat> if you have any questions about that, um, happy to answer and uh, discuss uh, later. Uh, transportation around the city. Um, obviously, this is not our own bus, but this is uh, just uh, public transit in London that had uh, an advertisement for uh, LIA. Um, but this transportation system <clears throat> around the city is great for students if you want to get a monthly uh, bus pass and use that um, to uh, get around to other parts of the city. That is an option for you as well. So in terms of student life meal plans, so um, you are given three meals per day if you are in our boarding facility. Um, you're given a student meal fob um, and there are about six different restaurants to choose from uh, with all different international cuisine. Uh, we have uh, Japanese, uh, Mexican, uh, Chinese soup salad and sandwich, uh, fresh fruit smoothies um, that are just across the street at the Covenant Garden Market um, and within walking distance of the school. Some of the student life uh, clubs. So as you can see, we have a variety of clubs on a typical um, academic year. So, um, you know, hopefully by September, a lot of these clubs will start to um, get up and running again. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of uh, different um, options here. And if you want to start a club, absolutely, you can um, start your own club. If you don't see something on this list that interests you, you can start uh, your own uh, club and then you can be the, the president of the club on your uh, resume um, that you started a club here. So there's uh, lots of different options there. You'll see we have cooking club here, track and field, uh, student talent show. Um, so some of our athletics, um, just showing a, you know, basketball, track and field, um, there's some fencing, something to try, um, you know, new for everyone. And typically in a regular school year, you know, uh, you know, we'd be able to do most of these things. Again, with COVID, some things are now a bit more limited. And then we also provide yearly activities as well. So including our international week, which is an opportunity for, you'll see at the top here, um, students, um, we provide a catering uh, for different international uh, foods. Um, we have international music and we celebrate a different country or different part of the world um, every day of the week for that one week. So Monday could be uh, Africa, uh, Tuesday could be South America. Um, and we will have food from that country or those countries. Um, and students are encouraged to get dressed up and share their culture. Uh, trips to Toronto and Niagara Falls um, are two uh, trips that we do and then ski trips. Uh, and leadership camp you'll see down here, summer student barbecue. 
you'll see the ski trip here, uh, beach day trip, international week, track and field day, uh, pumpkin carving. Perfect, thanks Vanessa. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some advantages to having a guidance counselor in, in a private school setting. So in comparison to a public school guidance counselor, uh, they tend to be a little bit less hands-on. Uh, we're here in our department, uh, we really try and go above and beyond in terms of our support for our students uh, at, uh, academically and um, socially as well. Um, so one thing that we do is we offer the chance for students to ask university recruiters questions. So every year, especially in the fall, we host, um, we try to host all the Ontario schools as well as schools outside of the province. So they'll come to the school, they'll do a presentation for about 30, 45 minutes, and then have a Q&A with students after, as well as share their contact information so that if there's any questions down the road, they can either get in contact with me or directly with a, a recruiter from that university. It also gives students a chance to kind of see all the options that are out in front of them. So maybe they're not sure about studying in Northern Ontario, uh, and kind of having a small school experience, but they want to go see the presentation and find out that they're really interested in outdoor education and that there's lots of opportunities for that up there. Um, we're quite lucky here to be in London. We're only two hours away from the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, and there are quite a few really good universities in that region, uh, as well as quite lucky to have one here in the city. I'm a little bit biased as I'm a Western uh, alumni, but uh, really good school with uh, some uh, really good affiliated campuses as well if students want that kind of smaller university experience. Um, so yeah, we, we help students connect with universities, we provide scholarship information, and we help with application and admissions procedures. So we'll have instructional workshops on different applications. So all Ontario universities use the same application system. Uh, where they log in online, register an account, uh, and, and do everything there. So we do lots of hands-on help for that, uh, as well as for the UK. It's a similar system uh, in terms of logging online, submitting everything onto one kind of database. Uh, so we do uh, instructional workshops for that, as well as uh, support throughout the process um, as needed. Uh, we have one-on-one -on -one meetings with uh, each of our students help them come up with their, what are their goals for the year? What are their goals if they're coming earlier to us? What are their goals in two or three years? And to make sure that they have the, the necessary classes for the program that they might wanna study down the road. Uh, as well as uh, talking about their academic progress, how they're settling in at the school uh, and the residence and all of that. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, we host uh, representatives uh, from, from our, thank you. Uh, all right, so now I'm just gonna quickly chat about some of the pathways that are open to our students, uh, and then some of the ways that we support each of those pathways. So one uh, program that's very popular with our students, but with international students in general, is business. Um, so in order to study business in an Ontario university, and generally most universities around the world, uh, students are gonna have to have grade 12 English, uh, grade 12 advanced functions and grade 12 calculus and vectors. So those three are pretty much written in stone. There's a couple universities that will accept a different math instead of calculus, uh, but in order to keep all doors open, these are the three that we recommend. And then for the next three courses, because they need six, they can pick any 4U or 4M courses of their choice. I always say whatever they're best at, whatever they're most interested in. Um, we do have business related courses, uh, one being accounting, uh, we've got international business, and we have uh, economics. So if they're really interested in business and they want a better foundation before going into first year, some of those courses may be a, a suitable option. Um, but as I said before, they're not necessary. If they're really good at art, uh, they could take art. If they're really into social science and history, uh, they could take that. Or one of our science classes that are listed there, bio, chem, physics, kinesiology, computer science. Uh, in terms of extracurriculars that we have, uh, we have a DECA business club. Uh, so they meet here at the school uh, and they, they practice on case studies um, and they prepare for what is actually a contest where they'll compete against other Ontario students. 
we have student council to help them with um, management, uh, organization, um, and kind of kind of HR in a way. Uh, there we go. I got my video. Hello, everyone. Um, we have the STEM club. So the STEM club is typically very sciencey, um, we with a focus on engineering, uh, but they also have a marketing kind of wing of their their club that helps with getting funding um, and, and fundraising, uh, as well as kind of displaying their accomplishments. Uh, so that's an option. Uh, and LA Foundation with Mr. Neal is kind of tied into that as well. So there are lots of opportunities to get involved outside of the classroom in kind of a more business setting. Um, and that's also something that they can talk about in their uh, supplementary applications. Uh, if students are interested in attending the top business schools in the, in the province, they are very competitive because so many local students and international students are applying. They need to do something outside of the classroom as well. So and high grades are important, but what are they doing to further their interests, their experience, their passion, and things outside of the classroom? So some of those things would be great opportunities. Uh, some graduates that have been accepted into some of these programs in the past, some of our alumni, uh, we've had some get into Ivy Business, uh, which is here at Western University. Uh, it's uh, nationally recognized, one of the top business schools in the country. Uh, we have Rotman Commerce, uh, the business program at the University of Toronto, very competitive and prestigious, uh, as well as uh, NYU and the States, uh, ranked number 10 in the world, and the University of Manchester in the UK. So lots of students have gone through this pathway and been able to achieve their goals on the other end of it. Next is engineering. Uh, these two are first because they're generally the most popular, uh, again, with our students and international students at large. Um, this one is less flexible in terms of what courses uh, students will need to show the universities. So out of their six grade 12 courses, five of them are decided for them. They have no choice on those ones. Uh, so English, functions, calculus, chemistry, and physics. Okay, so those five are gonna for sure be in their average. And then they get to pick one course, again, whatever they're best at, whatever they're most interested in. Um, some courses that we offer that are related, we have a, a computer engineering course with, uh, with our STEM director, uh, as well as computer science. And they learn some programming and coding. Um, other elective options be data management, uh, biology, business courses, social sciences courses. Um, so lots of options to fill that one space. Uh, related extracurriculars, our STEM club is, um, is, is really good. Uh, I think if you ask most of our students that are in the STEM club, what is, if they could talk about their experience here at LIA, they're probably gonna bring up STEM club. Uh, it's a very tight knit group. Uh, with Mr. Neal, uh, they compete together, uh, they work together after school. So not only is it a, a really good educational experience, it's kind of like a cohesion uh, experience, right? It, it, it ties them to the school and their classmates in a way that they can't just find in class. Um, we also have 3D printers um, and CAD and engineering manufacturing. So whether it's in their courses of computer engineering, computer science, or it's in their extracurriculars, um, they're going to get a really good foundation in, in the STEM fields here at LIA um, and be able to take that experience on to the next level as they study at that university. Some graduates have been accepted into the following schools, uh, the University of Toronto, University of Waterloo, which is, their engineering and computer science programs are uh, ranked very highly in the world. Um, we've got McGill uh, and then the University of New South Wales in Australia and the University of Manchester. So again, a diverse group uh, with many different options. Now, um, so I may have to wrap up just kind of quickly. Um, so in terms of the science pathway, you know, again, it's kind of the, the same, same thing um, in terms of what is required, some other elective courses and all this information, uh, you know, when you do enroll at the school, You'll be able to sit down uh, with Mr. McDowell um, or someone from guidance and be able to talk through this and have that plan. We could even have this plan uh, prior to even your arrival so that everything is laid out um, uh, clearly there. So I'll just, uh, if you don't mind, maybe Absolutely. we'll continue through. 
um, art and design as well. Um, some interesting uh, institutions that our students have been accepted to, including uh, Osmod in Paris. Now, in terms of the fee schedule, um, this is uh, basically how it works is there is an application fee of $300. Um, the tuition deposit goes towards your tuition. So this deposit is paid in order to get your study permit. Um, and we will issue a letter of acceptance showing that you have paid this um, and that you are um, a serious student uh, that has been accepted into the school. Um, so uh, that will be part of the tuition. So um, everything is included in um, our eight month academic uh, all inclusive price. So that would include your uh, student council and clubs, uh, airport pickup, school uniform, health insurance, um, your boarding, your meals fee, everything uh, is included in that. Um, and if you would like to talk about payment plans um, or anything like that, you can uh, speak to a, uh, an admissions staff and we'll give you the contact information after this. So in terms of scholarships, we do offer tuition scholarships up to 50% in value uh, for our full-time uh, long-term students. Um, there are different scholarships depending on maybe what country you come from um, in terms of we offer uh, different diversity scholarships. Uh, we also offer academic and merit-based scholarships and to apply for these it's quite simple. Um, you just need to complete an application form as you would normally. Um, we will do a Zoom interview with you with the admissions team uh, once you are done your placement testing. Uh, and especially for larger tuition scholarships, we will require uh, both placement and uh, Zoom interviews. Typically, you can actually just apply uh, online and uh, that will, um, uh, we'll be able to see your transcripts and give you an entry scholarship actually from there. Sure, yeah, yeah. In the last few years, we've had <laughs> some, uh, some students here that we've highlighted. Uh, one, uh, Leanne on the left, a fantastic student. She's actually in my history class. Um, and she got accepted to Rotman Commerce, a uh, very prestigious program. As you can see, she got offers to many universities. Uh, and then, and that's kind of what our hope is. We, we show all the pathways to, to students here in Ontario, other places in Canada and the world, they get the offers and then they can make the choice, right? Whatever is the best fit for them and their family. Uh, maybe they want to be closer to their family, I don't know, uh, but they have that option. Uh, and then on the right, we have Kian who got into Ryerson Engineering. Kian was also in our STEM club uh, and definitely saw the value in it. And he comes back and he visits as well. Uh, we've got Nikolai on the left here. Uh, he went to uh, University of Guelph for the science program there. Uh, and on the right, we have um, Esther uh, and she got into York for health studies. Uh, interesting offer on the left, we've got um, Bao Long Pham. Uh, he actually went to the University of Amsterdam uh, for linguistics. Um, so again, not something that too many of our students have done, but in, in his case, he was like, you know what, I'm really interested in studying in Europe, um, but I need to find a program that's in English for me because I don't speak um, Dutch and I don't speak German, so I can't attend some of those universities. So I sat down with them. We looked through all the options, uh, went through the application process, um, and, and we found one that suited him. Um, so again, happy to do that with any of uh, any of your students or any future students, um, uh, something learn, new to learn for me and for them, uh, and uh, we're kind of in it together. And then on the right, we've got Eddie, uh, who ended up going to Guelph for computer science, um, but received some very prestigious offers to Waterloo as well. Uh, we've got uh, Min Jia on the left, uh, computer science, really strong co-op program. Uh, some students co-op with Facebook and Google in Silicon Valley from, from that program. Um, so he had uh, kind of a pick for many good choices. Uh, and then on the right, Hu uh, Xin Yu um, went to Queens for Bachelor of Commerce, um, but also many, many good choices. All right, so um, that kind of concludes our presentation. Um, please feel free to um, screenshot this page, contact our admissions department, um, including myself and my team. Um, we speak different languages, so uh, if that's helpful for you as well, um, please let us know um, and we can uh, arrange that. Um, please also uh, go on our website. You can follow us on social media. Um, 
and we'll be posting uh, new opportunities and uh, news updates as well there. And please sign up uh, for next week as we will be uh, talking more about our International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. Uh, thank you very much and uh, we'll uh, end the uh, webinar now. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks,